Geometry lesson 4-7. We're going to be using the concept of using coordinates to prove some triangles are congruent or different pieces of them. So we have what we call coordinate proof. Placing the actual geometric figure on a coordinate plane and using any distance and midpoint formulas on it to determine that we have any congruent sides or if we have any angles that might be of interest. So basically you're dealing with distance for the most part. Our first example, <clears throat> a right triangle has legs of 6 and 8. Put onto a coordinate plane and label the vertices. Now, in order for something to be a right triangle that has legs of 6 and 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we could be dealing with this triangle here. <clears throat> Where this is located, let me move that a second, Where that triangle is actually located <clears throat> can make it easier or harder for us. I have all the right in the world to move it anywhere I want. In fact, I don't even have to have it like this. I could rotate it if I'd rather. So if you want to put the triangle down here like this, you can. If you want to put the triangle over here, you can. If you want to move it so that it's like this, that's a little bit harder, especially for determining lengths, you can. If you want to put it like so, it really doesn't matter. In this particular case, it might be advantageous to line up the right angle in the corner with the vertex. Because that way, we've got actually two of the three sides. We know that this side is equal to six, and we know that this side is equal to eight. Because we're dealing with this right triangle. And we're being asked, put it onto a coordinate plane, label the vertices, and find the length of the hypotenuse. Of all the different positions I could put this in, probably the easiest to find the hypotenuse is right here. This is actually at the coordinate 0, 6, and this is at the coordinate 8, 0. Could somebody have flipped it so that it only went out to 6 over here, but it went up to 8 there? Absolutely, and it wouldn't matter either, because the hypotenuse wouldn't change the value. So if we're going to plug these into the, dis the distance formula, we would say d is equal to the square root and then we would substitute and put the x values in. So I'll go 0 minus 8, which doesn't matter that it comes out to a negative because I'm going to end up squaring it anyway, plus 6 minus 0 for the y's, which also is going to get squared. I now have the distance is equal to negative 8 squared plus 6 squared. And negative 8 times negative 8 makes positive 64. 6 times 6 makes 36. We are now dealing with the square root of 100, which means the distance is 10 units. So the hypotenuse is 10. This particular triangle is a 10, a 6 by 8, 6, 8, 10 right triangle, which makes it a Pythagorean triple. All right? Remember, you can place these shapes anywhere you want. You might as well place them where it's the easiest for you to count. We could have moved it so the hypotenuse was on the line and we would have seen that it was exactly 10 units. That won't always happen though with every right triangle. Somebody's going to say, I'm just going to twist it so the hypotenuse is on the x-axis and then I'll count it out. This is only fortunate that it comes out to be 10. There could be other triangles where the hypotenuse is not a whole integer and you'll have to guess, but if you put the other legs on where they should go, it'll make it a little bit easier for you. All right. Now let's look at how the midpoint could be affected. <clears throat> triangle ABO which is right here, A to B to O, is congruent to C to B to O, find the coordinates of B. Now, we can look at the graph and find the coordinates. That's not the difficult part. I did this on purpose. I used an easy problem so that we can look at this and we could say, well, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if secretly we want to say that's 10, 10, just so we can prove whether or not this works, that's fine. But I wouldn't recommend just strictly always looking for that. It may not always come out to a nice, perfect spot. But what will work is if you look at this and say, well, this is 0, 20, and this is at the coordinate 20, 0, you can now use your midpoint formula to actually find that coordinate right there. You take and you find the average of your x's and the average of your y's, and that's your coordinate. 
So if I were to do that, the average of my x's would be 0 and 20. 0 plus 20 over 2 is going to be 20 over 2, which equals 10. This is for the x's. And yes, I chose this on purpose. I chose easy situations. And then on for the y's, exactly the same scenario. It would be 20 plus 0 over 2, which makes 20 over 2, which also makes 10. Chose it on purpose. Remember all coordinates are x comma y, so therefore since our x value is 10 and our y value is 10, we know that we have the coordinate 10, 10. Perfect, which means it works. You won't always have perfect easy numbers, but the algorithm, the way you set it up, is exactly the same. If you want to find the midpoint between two coordinates, just find the average of the x's and the average of the y's.